So welcome to this presentation about uh, humanitarian open and OpenStreetMap uh, and disaster management. This video shows the basic principles moving from uh, static maps to a dynamic description of moving objects and dynamic coastlines, for example, due to an impact of a tsunami. The track consists of five geolocations in this example and every geolocation has a timestamp. In disaster management, this track could represent a moving ambulance or represent the equipment for um, processing water or providing electricity to a certain area. And when these resources are reallocated in another place, then the track represents where the resources, the resources are and when they are uh, reallocated. Um, we can apply the same to a coastline. So we have here four tracks with three track points and when we link the um, uh, four track points at time uh, zero then we get the coastal line at this uh, time stamp. So if we move forward in time then the coastline may have changed due to erosion or due to a big flooding um, and this uh, represents the changing of the coastline due to that impact. This space and time principles of timestamps at uh, geo objects can be extended to a more generalized object definitions. For example, a polygon representing a lake that changes in space and time due to evaporation or rainfall, and so uh, the the, the track principle gen can be generalized to uh, all the other objects that are stored in a map. Now we look on downloading maps. This is the, the Navit map extractor for the navigation system Navit. It's open source and it's based on OpenStreetMap. So if you are interested in a certain area, for example Namibia, due to a flood event, then you extract a certain area, download it to, it your, to your mobile device and use it and use it as disaster management map, knowing where the resources are currently and uh, access them. New track points can be recorded or identified by satellite image analysis. This image analysis could represent a new updated coastline at the timestamp T4. And then the updated data, only the differences between stored map and the new uh, coastline analysis can be shared among mobile devices, for example, with Bluetooth. Now let's have a quick look on server infrastructure. If we look on a map and we download a map, on our mobile device for further use in disaster management areas, then this map is stored as a basic map. Due to changes and uh, new satellite analogies, we have the basic map at t equals zero and we look at the diff uh, at t equals one, t equals two and so on. Due to new timestamps, the, um, the map may change and this is equivalent to software management with uh, versioning systems. And these versioning systems only track the changes in, this, in, the, in the source code. And we have a similar problem with these maps as well. Not all map objects are changing. Only in the distinguished area, maps are changed due to a flood event, earthquake, and so on. Now we look at GitHub. GitHub is a repository to manage your software. You can use it for uh, ASCII files, text files, CV, uh, CSV files as well, and also uh, XML files, for example. If a map is stored in an XML file, it can be used for versioning this XML files as well. And uh, software is managed by tags, not tags in the sense of uh, uh, tagging uh, geo objects in sense of uh, tagging a software version. You know that from, for example, uh, Linux Mint version 17 or um, OS X version 10, for example, these uh, versioning of the software is now used for maps 
as a timestamp. So we uh, a certain um, area on a map um, attaches a, a, a software tag, and this software tag is representing the timestamp. And going back to that software management, the software management has a representation of ongoing software releases, and these software releases uh, with the software tags represent the changes in space and time. The big benefit is that these software tools have also a conflict management uh, if um, changes stand in conflict to each other if two software developers provide source code. Last but not least we have to represent a risk at a certain geolocation. And we have the digital elevation model and if we transfer the digital elevation to the risk at a certain geolocation, this digital elevation model can help us to represent a risk map in an area. Thank you for watching this video about the basic concepts of dynamic map representation.